<laughs> what a beginning to the idea that I intend to demonstrate to you in this idea of a miracle proceeding within this, what do we term it, a course in miracles of conversion of your mind that opened with a very fundamental admission that the whole part of you as that body form is nothing but a moment's isolation within your memory about yourself in the contagion of an idea of objective association of a disease, a particleization of your body within a formulation that you now proclaim to be your life and love. I'm glad you joined me this morning. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to close off a segment of space-time because of the rapidness with it, within which, when you came into this correspondence, what did you do? You began to recognize outside of yourself, in the passing of the dream, that in the passing of you into the realization of divine love, you began to recognize others who were going to do what? pass in the dream along with you. What a joy it is for me to teach my Savior, Jesus Christ, resurrected, who in such an emphatic way said very simply, I have had my experience of the conversion of the entirety of my mind. I am going to represent to you a picture of a vision of ideas of body formulation in which we appear to share within the illusion of the dream of this world, all right, that we are actually separate into, how do you pose it as, millions and billions of other body, when the whole idea of the teaching in the healing of the dream, which will be the second part of this interlude, you can see that as you pass individually in a new vision of yourself in memory form, all those around you, through the energy of the extension of you, are going to pass along with you. We're going to look at, just for a moment, in what we call the little garden or the secret garden for some of you, my realization that when you're watching this video right now, I am aware that you have been protecting your secret garden a little bit. You've looked out into the world. Look, you've looked at the insanity of what's going on in the perspective of the realization of this world. And he said, uh, there's got to be another way. The mere expression of it, while it may have appeared to you, as we read you at the opening, an allegory, in truth, if you can trust me with this, the entire representation of your body within the dream sequence of yourself actually contains all of the possibilities that are ever going to happen to you practice, memory, memory, that you obviously are carrying around with you in the idea that you are in an occupancy of the illusion of this world, which causes you to believe that you are a body. You're not a body. You're mine. Your mind is perfect and whole as you create it, and you have absolutely nothing to say about that. In the illusion of the idea of a moment of separation, you can occupy yourself with it, the idea that you are suffering pain and loneliness and death, but it will always be within the little containment of yourself that confines you just to that moment when you suffered from the idea that you could have been separate. In this little sequence about the garden, 
we're going to share together the idea that I just saw you begin to release some of the defenses that you had constructed, because within your memory, you began to recognize out there what were previously old memories within your idea of yourself that while they did indeed contain some joy and love and memory that we're sharing with each other, there were always other aspects within the illusion that caused you to be disillusioned almost immediately by the fracturedism that's occurring in the sequence of the idea of a space-time location confined within universal mind to this little containment of your body. You listen to me, this is imperative to the teaching. It's impossible if you have a body, and I assure you that you do. The human condition, by, by body, I mean surrounding you, is a formulation of yourself. <clears throat> I believe in the Old Testament it was taught as Adam and Eve. And uh, that, of course, became immediately allegorical. I, I'm not teaching allegorical. I'm looking directly at you and tell you that you are in a dream of a sequence where you establish and attempt to continue to establish ideas about yourself within that containment of your mind because of your fear of the power of the universe that's surrounding you. Let's read a little together. Within this kingdom, the human condition, the ego rules and cruelly and to defend this little speck of dust, it bids you fight against the universe. This fragment of your mind is such a tiny part of it that could you but appreciate the whole, you would instantly see that it is like the smallest sunbeam to the sun, or like the faintest ripple on the surface of the ocean. In its amazing arrogance, this tiny sunbeam has decided it is a sun. This almost imperceptible ripple hails itself as the ocean. Think how alone and frightening is this little thought that you have, this infinitesimal illusion holding itself apart against the universe. The sun becomes the sunbeam's enemy that would devour it. And the ocean terrifies the little ripple and wants to swallow it. Listen, yet neither sun nor ocean is even aware of all this strange and meaningless activity. They merely continue unaware that they are feared and hated by a tiny segment of themselves. Even that segment is not lost to them, for it could not survive apart from them. And what it thinks it is in no way changes its total dependency on them for its being. Why? Its whole existence still remains in them. Without the sun, the sunbeam would be gone. The ripple without the ocean is inconceivable. I was going to avoid allegoricalism, and I immediately began to attempt to be allegorical. That's all right. Why? Well, it's impossible for me to actually begin to communicate with you the idea of the love that is increasing in its intensity of me, in my description of sunbeams, of light, of beauty, of correspondence of dreams of true, true within your body form, where we're not increasing together the idea of moments of love. Now, do I object to the sunbeam that's around you? Dear loves, I don't object to anything. What I want to show you is the sunbeam that you use to represent yourself obviously within the configuration of the idea of space-time, is not utilizing the magnus, magnity of the idea of the wholeness of you. Jesus wants me for a sunbeam to shine on earth below.